So to start off, I just wanted to uh, tell you about uh, my learning environment um, because context is really important when you're talking about anything, but um, particularly with technology. Um, too often we're looking for one size fits all or, or thinking that something that works in one place will definitely work in another. So it's important for you to understand that when I talk about the things I'm going to be talking about, um, you're aware of uh, my context and my students' context. I teach a grade 7 class, an intermediate class, uh, in which um, we're pretty lucky in that we have some class devices that we don't need to um, share. In other words, they don't need to be signed out. They live in our room. Um, and th those include um, 10 iPad devices, um, 3 or 4 MacBooks. And then, of course, we have access to all the school technology, laptop cards, and all the things that a lot of other schools have. Uh, but to be honest, we don't end up using much of those, okay? Notice that I said that um, I didn't have, we don't have a class set of anything. Um, one of the things that makes this work is because I also allow for bring your own device in my class, uh, which means that students who have permission can bring an uh, internet-connected device to use and tap into our ubiquitous Wi-Fi. So, um, in the end, it pretty much works out that everyone's one-to-one -one if they need to be. Um, but uh, I'm a really big fan of not having um, class sets of things because it encourages you to focus on what's necessary and for students to think about what do I need for this particular task and do I need it for another. Uh, other than that, we're using a lot of um, other Web 2.0 tools, such as VoiceThread and Animoto. Um, and I like to say that we have a paperless class in the sense that there's no exchange of papers between teacher and student, as in, oh, I'll hand in, you mark, and then I'll hand back. But we use paper all the time for thinking mostly, to uh, doodle out our thoughts, to collaborate, to plan things out, and so on. Yeah. So that's sort of a window into what our class is like. Ah, so fearless or, um, or level-headed? Uh, that's, I guess it's an interesting dichotomy there. I'm, like a lot of people, I guess I would say that I, I'm neither. So um, I like to think that I, I vacillate between uh, the two and that um, wisdom <laughs> kind of prevails at most times. Um, in, earlier in my career, I guess I could be described as more fearless in terms of um, taking risks and so on. Particularly when um, Web 2.0 first exploded, or when mobile technologies first exploded, it was really unknown terrain. It was very exciting because um, uh, we were we were walking in an area metaphorically that um, no one else had walked before. So um, we had to try things out. We had to take risks. Does this work? Does that work? Um, should we do Twitter in the classroom? Should we not? All these kind of things. So definitely I would say that it's, um, I'm a much wiser teacher now with technology because, um, and, but that's only because so many um, uh, really, really good risks were taken um, in the past. And mistakes were made and successes were had and so on. So now um, I have much better understanding and a much clearer and coherent idea of what works in a given situation as opposed to saying, well, let's just give this a try. I have no idea why I'm doing it or, or if it's going to work, but it seems like it's going to be exciting. This is a really good question because um, it's something that I end up speaking to a lot of people about. So many times when we're dealing with technology, we look at the logistics, we look at the hardware, we look at the, the, you know, the things that we can see and touch, but in actual fact, those are the things that actually don't matter as much and aren't as important and are actually easy to do. The real difficult work and, and the stuff that sometimes comes up as, for, as a barrier in our learning, in our class for instance, are, are um, changing mindsets and, and getting people onto new paradigms of thinking or learning. Um, so uh, and that includes all stakeholders. So we're talking about administration, uh, we're talking about system level, we're talking about uh, parents, community, and of course, we're always talking about students as well, because we can't assume that students are always on board with, with whatever pedagogy we, we are particularly, are supposedly um, trying to uh, enact in the classroom. So um, that's the biggest challenge, is getting people to understand, well, what is the point of having um, uh, cloud, cloud tools in the classroom, you know? How does that enhance creativity, collaboration, and so on? Um, 
uh, those kind of things. Oh, successes. Well, there have definitely been a lot of successes, and um, it's kind of difficult to uh, outline each one. Um, needless to say, I wouldn't be someone who is an advocate and a voice for using technology for creativity, collaboration, um, communication and critical thinking if I didn't see it with my own eyes for years in different, many, many different settings, many different dif demographics and so on. Um, I guess the thing that um, I'm, I'm most proud of and, and have seen uh, have the biggest impact is um, the extent to which we can use technology now to make learning transparent. You know, so, so we can open up all those private notebooks and all those private assignments that, that we need to hand in and, and open up the learning to create a collaborative environment um, where innovation and, and creativity can really flourish, where divergent thinking can combine with convergent thinking in a really, really powerful way. Um, and because I'm a big proponent of that idea that, um, that these kind of dynamic learning environments are not so much about particular lessons or a particular unit of study or a particular one little tool that you use, but more about the general um, environment that you're creating, the physical one and also the metaphysical one. Advice. Hmm. Well, my advice for people, really, um, any educator, um, student or parent or whoever, um, looking to create these sort of environments and use these kind of tools is basically, I mean, a good place to start would be to be a networked learner, you know, um, to, to have those supports in place and to, to know how to um, uh, seek knowledge and support in, in, in your physical environment and, and the people that, you know, face to face, you know, and and um, outside of that as well, you know, whether it be um, around your province, around the country, around the world. Um, it's really, if you're taking your approach where you're waiting for a quote-unquote expert to sort of, um, you know, fill you with this information and knowledge, it's going to be a hard road for you. You know, we live in a world that's moving so fast, and if you at all want to integrate technology into any sort of learning that's happening in your organization, let alone your schools, um, it's going to be an effort that you're going to need to do um, in a networked way. Okay? The other piece of advice that I would really, really give you is to do what you're talking about. Okay? Sometimes we get stuck in these sort of theorizing 21st century learning and, and talking about, well, you know, and, and at times um, I, I call it, you know, the hand wringing, where, where you sit around and talk about, oh, how different everything is today than it was yesterday, um, instead of really just getting on to the business of doing, you know, do, reflect, redo, do, reflect, redo, do, reflect, redo, and in a collaborative fashion. So that's my advice to you.